Okay, we've got Avi, we've got a Sverage fan. They're going to talk about veganism, health, maybe ethics. We'll see. Uh, go ahead, Avi. Okay, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? So I heard a little bit about um, your debate with Kevin before, uh, and I just wanted to get some clarity on your positions. Okay. All right, so what's your, what's your view on epidemiology? You, do you think it's like categorically useless? Do you think it's, um, do you think it's, if there is use, there is some value to it, just not as high as RCTs? Um, what's, what's your take on the whole thing? Hello? Oh, oh shit. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. I, well, when you say epidemiology, do you mean, uh, like supplementation or like what, what exactly? I mean, you, like, I mean, you know, like prospective, let's start with prospective cohort studies. Okay. So okay. the problem I have with, with studies that I, that I see on the screen when I, when I Google them is I don't know, like, I don't really know what it's coming from despite what it says on the screen. I don't know if it's been fabricated. I don't know if it has bias I don't know anything about it. It's just what's being shown on, on the screen. And and with that being said, there are contradictory uh, studies, you know, some that say one thing, some that say another thing. And I don't see a, like a really clear cut reason to believe one thing or the other when, I, when it comes to studies. Do you believe smoking causes uh, cardiovascular disease? Do I believe? I, I, don't, I don't know if it does or doesn't. Oh, okay. So you're not you're unsure that smoking causes cardiovascular disease. Yeah, I'm 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 not sure. Okay, cool. Um do you think smoking causes cancer? I I have no idea. Oh, interesting. Um do you think smoking causes lung cancer? Um so I I'm okay, so when it comes to smoking, right? I can I can make educated guesses on my based on my intuition, right? Like I know that it's smoke. I just use common sense. It's smoke. It's you know it. it you know w when you try to smoke it, you cough and it, it makes you look like shit. You know. Wait, I, wait, I wait, whoa, 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 whoa! How do you know any of that? How do you you just like? How do you know it makes you look bad? How do you know it's um? How, how do there's so many problems with that? Okay, so um, your intuition. You have an intuition that because it's smoke, maybe it, but. Maybe it's good because it's smoke. Um, you have no idea what the outcome is. Just because we, there are many times we have intuitions and, you know, our intuitions are shown to be wrong. In fact, good things come from them. Um, so my question again is just how, how like, if you want to maintain an egg, because here you were being consistent. You were saying, okay, like I'm agnostic about smoking causing cancer. I'm agnostic about smoking causing CBD. I'm agnostic about, then I asked you about lung cancer specifically. And, I just want to know your answer before we go on to like all of this. What's your answer for lung cancer specifically? Okay. So I actually want to make a correction. So um, when I was talking to the, to the nutritionist earlier, I, um, I had said that when it comes to, to, you know, studies and, and other things where it's overwhelming and it's completely just skewed one way, I'm inclined to believe that thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm what, and when you say overwhelming, what do you mean? What do you mean when you say overwhelming? Well, when there's like a, when there's like a 98 when there's like like 99 percent of of uh of studies say one thing and then like maybe one percent or like 0.5 percent. you mean that in thing. terms of statistical significance you mean that in terms of effect size uh, in terms of the 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 outcomes of all the studies if they all say the same no thing, no they're both outcomes it. both statistical significance and effect size are both outcomes so i'm just asking you one or the other or both uh so okay what sorry can you repeat that yeah sure so in any study there's because here's the thing with lung cancer and cvd i don't think that'll pass the bar for you because there are some studies with lung cancer and cvd where they don't find the statistically significant difference in cardiovascular disease for for uh sorry for smoking that smoking doesn't uh statistically significant cause cardiovascular disease um a lot of them have effect sizes um but some of them don't. Uh, so I'm just asking you, which one is it? Okay, well, w would you agree that the overwhelming majority of the studies say that smoking does cause those problems? 
No, actually, overwhelming majority of the studies um, that I've looked at, they have it uh, dipping into the at the null with the ninety five percent confidence interval uh, for especially for average level smokers. It's when you actually take a look at meta analyses and summate it all up that you get to a point estimate that gives you the answer. Yeah, yeah. So my 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 point here is when when there's a when there's an overwhelming majority that that says I, I don't one think or you appreciated what I just said though. Like, so look, like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not it's not clear if you looked at any one study for smoking and cardiovascular disease, it actually is not clear from study to study that you looked at that smoking causes cardiovascular disease. It's only when you meta analytically make them do you get a clear picture. Okay, so same thing, not, same thing for red meat, by the way, same thing for red meat and cardiovascular disease. It's not actually clear that red meat causes cardiovascular disease from every individual study. It's only when you meta analytically summate them and you get the overall picture. It's the same thing for CBD and uh, smoking. Yeah, so if it's not clear, then how can you come to a conclusion like, like through meta analytic summation? But again, I'm not asking you're now you're trying to ask on my view. I'm just going to your view. I just want to know what your view on your view, can will you say that it's not clear that will you say that it's not clear that smoking causes CBD? I think that well, I'm not familiar with all the the studies on it, and I would say that if if the studies um, overwhelmingly come to one conclusion over the other, then I would believe the overwhelming majority. But we just went that through this. Depends though. on what it is. Okay, so we just yeah, went yeah. through this. Yeah, yeah. So there's no it point depends in bringing on the it study. up again. So yeah, yeah. So so here, would you like me to show you what the? Would you like me to show you the individual studies? What they look like? No, no, not the individual studies. What I, what I mean is, it depends on on again if it's the overwhelming majority. Or... Okay, so I'm, that's why I'm telling you to look at the individual studies, and you can see the overwhelming majority. They don't all statistically significantly point to the effect size that you want to show that it's it's harmful. It's only when you meta analytically submit it do you get that answer. For some, okay, okay, so 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 okay, so so what do you mean by um, meta analytical? Yeah, you, so you can when you pool the results of multiple studies, what happens is you get a okay. So look, so you have a null, you have a reference. And then you have a point estimate in the study and you have a confidence interval. The confidence interval can dip. If you have this, any individual study, it's not a whole lot of sample size. You can have a confidence interval that dips over the null. And then you can't say, you can't reject the null based on that study. You can't say that smoking causes CBD. However, if you take all of those individual studies and you summate them, you can sum their effects over and then the confidence interval shrinks and then you can say, because it doesn't overlap with the null, you can say that it causes CBD. The same thing is true with meat and CBD, by the way. You, if you look at the individual studies, um, the majority, a lot of this, I don't know if it's majority, but a lot of the studies don't actually statistically significantly overlap with the confidence interval one, with the reference. However, if you meta analytically summate them, you see that red meat causes CBD. So I just want to know if that, in that case, what your conclusion would be if it is the case that the effect sizes or oh, the overall effect sizes, the weighted average of the studies point to it being harmful, but are not statistically significant, but a meta analytic summation would show that it is harmful. What would your view be? Would your view be that it is harmful or not harmful? Hello? Oh yeah. Sorry. I, I didn't uh, push the talk. Uh, yeah, my, my view would be that uh, that I just don't know. Okay, cool. So do you? So you don't know? So you don't know that smoking causes cardiovascular disease? Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right. So when someone says, you know, hey, hey, doc, like I'm, I want to be heart healthy. I'm, you know, I want to. I have this really bad habit of smoking like a chimney. Um, do you think it'll be better? It'll be better for my heart if I stop smoking. You, on your view, the correct answer is I don't know. Well, here's the thing, right? When I said that, I don't, said that I don't correct. I don't, or, I don't, I don't, wait, yes or wait? Before you clarify, just tell yeah. me if that's correct yeah. or incorrect. Um, if if it okay, hold on a second. You can take time to think. It's okay. No, I just I, someone someone came in. Um, okay. so you said uh, what I think it's it's correct for the doctor to say he doesn't know. 
the doctor says we we don't know. We don't know enough to answer that question. So again, the patient asks, I want to be heart healthy. I have a problem with smoking. I have an issue with where I smoke like a chimney. Do you think it will be better for my heart? Do you lean in any direction in terms of whether it would be better for my heart if so, I quit that habit so, of smoking like a chimney? Your wait, wait. You on your view, the correct answer is we don't ha- we don't know. We don't know if it would be better for your heart. We, we, if, we, we, no, yeah, the, the correct answer is we don't know for sure. No, I didn't. Oh, woo! That was a nice flip there. No, no, no. I didn't ask you if you knew for sure. I just asked you if you had enough evidence to lean in one direction or other to give advice. So yes, and we don't know anything for sure. Like, of course, you can try to try to weasel into like agnosticism for with respect to like, well, we can't extend 100 percent certainty to anything. That's true for everything. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm just asking you. Oh. Do you think we have enough evidence to make a recommendation? Do we have enough evidence when a patient comes in and says, hey, I have this issue where I'm smoking like a chimney. I want to be heart healthy. I don't want to get CVD. Should I stop this habit of smoking? Is there enough evidence to, for you to make a recommendation as a doctor to me? Is your answer that there is not enough evidence for a doctor to make a recommendation one way or the other? Yes, there's not enough evidence for that. And also, Okay, thank you. What- and also, when you go about your day-to-day life, uh, as I said before with the previous, like, seven debates I just did, um, when it comes to, uh, you know, coming to a conclusion on, on these things, since I can't use, you know, these studies and stuff, like, I can just use my intuition. Like I said, like, I can say it's probably not a good idea to smoke, even though I don't know for sure if it, that it's bad or not. It's what does that not. mean? That's okay, so just, it. all right, we'll get to the intuition issue and why that's ridiculous, but... Uh, just, so just to be clear, so we, you bet, so just to be, just so we're completely clear. So when patients ask if they should stop smoking for their heart health, you should, the correct answer is we don't know. And, and we shouldn't recommend either way. Well, yeah, the, the correct answer is we don't know, but, you know, use your intuition. Do we to have, the best. okay, so you, okay, so let's go on to that. So now you, so you, based on, based on the evidence we don't have any anything to recommend each each and either way or the other. Okay. Now let's say someone says, "Well, my intuition is that my heart feels great when I smoke." Okay, and what's your like point? Is would you agree with them? Would you say, "Okay, smoking is heart healthy for those individuals"? I can't make that uh, choice for them. That's them. I didn't ask if you can make the choice for them or not. That's not what I asked. I said on your epist. The question is, on your epistemology, would you say that they are making some, an argument that meets your bar for what would be accepted as a, a valid inference for recommending one behavior or another? So you told me you, you're, you're going about intuition. What do you mean by that? When you say you're not going to evaluate it by evidence, you say you're going to evaluate it by intuition. What does that mean? Well, when I say intuition, I, I mean basically go by you know your your common sense, your your your, your knowledge. Your, what does that mean? Your your feeling. Well, wait it's, that well, that doesn't guess, give me uh, it's that doesn't give me anything to work with. Okay, so when you say go by common sense, what is that just? What does that mean? Is that just what people are saying? Is that just what do you mean by when you say go by common sense? Well, for example, it's common sense not to uh, you know uh, go up to a group of five people and and just start hitting one of them, you're probably going to get jumped. And it's common sense to not put, you know, smoke into your body. It's, it's why is it? Sense. Why is one common sense and not the other? Wait, so, sorry, what, 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 what? Why is one common sense and not the other? Why is one what common sense? What are you referring to? Why is, you gave me two examples. I'm asking why one is, why, why is one common sense and the other common sense? Like, why could it be the, why could it just? Why couldn't it just as easily be that smoking is common sense to be healthy? To be healthy? Okay. So, okay. So, yeah, so, oh, okay. To be healthy. I, I see what you're saying. So you're saying why isn't it common sense to to think that smoking is healthy? Or or at least neutral. Like why is it common sense to to think smoking would be would be good? I mean, would be bad? Because if if you look for, for your heart inward, specifically. Because if you look inward and connected to your body, then you know that. This this smoke it doesn't belong. It just you, when you when you smoke it, you start coughing for a reason. Okay, say someone doesn't cough. No. Well, there are other like, there are other things too. Like it just okay. You'll feel well, so we're, so we're gonna okay. So it's not just the fact that you cough, right? So we're, there's something it's, it's else also, there. 
Well, yeah, it's also like you don't even have to try it to to know in a common sense, common, like like how to know that it's not good. How how because does that you just work? think about it? Okay, you, you think, think about, about it, it like, and then what? Like, so you think about it, then what happens? You, you don't. Yeah, like you, you don't have to attempt to jump off a cliff to know it's a bad idea. Yeah, right. I didn't say you needed to jump off a cliff. I'm just trying to understand how you're. I just trying to understand how this intuition gets you to deducing that smoking is bad for common sense. Now you said you look inward. Okay, so you think inward about the smoking. What what does that do? How does that get you to conclude that it's that it's bad? It just makes me feel like it's something I should avoid because it's smoke being put into my okay, lungs. So, so let's say someone looks inward and says, wow, like I'm, I'm looking inward and smoking is something that really belongs in my lungs. Okay. So then, so then are that's they, on their view, have... are, there, are they being rational? Are they being rational in the same way you are in concluding I mean, that smoking should belong in their lungs? Well, yeah, it depends who you ask, right? If, if you... Oh, okay. And they're not being, out, they're not being yeah. rational. And... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So are, look. You're, you're giving a bar, right? Your, your bar is that you look inward and you come to this conclusion about whether smoke belongs in your lungs or not. So let's say someone looks inward and comes to the conclusion that this smoke belongs in my lungs. Is that something you would accept for them? Not for you, but would you accept it for them? Uh, it would depend on a few things. It, it, would, it would depend. It would, it would de okay, so it would depend on their age. Uh, it would depend on... Uh, their life experiences. It depend on their, their current uh, state of mind. It depend on a lot. Okay, what age do they need to be? Um, pretty much uh, like same age. I'd say I'd say same age as drinking, drinking. like twenty one. Okay, okay, so twenty one. Okay, now you said life experience. What life experiences are required? Let's. What life experiences are required? You're giving me criteria that are need to be passed for for the intuition to work. Oh, yeah. So I, we already get. Oh, yeah, we already sorry. got age. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't do the push talk. My bad. Um, yeah, just um, because some people that they, they turn to these kind of things when they're going through a tough time in life, and right. if, if so that, we that's already the reason they're okay. doing it. So let's say they I didn't say do that's... it like that, right? So let's get that off the table. So they're not they're not underage. Okay. They're okay. 21. They're not doing it because okay. they went through tough stuff in their life, all right? And they're yeah. looking inward into yeah. themselves and they're saying the smoke belongs in my lungs. Yeah, so, so to me, that's irrational because I'm someone who, who doesn't believe that it's, it's good for me. If you ask me, I would no, say... I'm not, they're not, no, 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 no. They're not saying it's good for you. They're saying that it's good for them. They're looking, into right. their, they're looking right. inward. They're looking into their lungs and they're saying, this smoke belongs in my lungs, okay? Just like you're mm -hmm. looking inward and you're saying the smoke does not belong in my, in my lungs. They are mm -hmm. set coming to a different conclusion. They're not making a claim about mm -hmm. your lungs. They're making a claim about their own lungs. Okay. So what's your view on that? Or is, are they being as rational as you are? Or is there something different about the way they're running their epistemology from the way you're running your epistemology? No, I, I think that uh, I, I would need reasons for that to understand it. I would, if they tell me they need why smoke do in their you lungs, need, I need to know why. Why do you need any why. other reasons? So far, everything you gave me was looking inward and coming to a conclusion. Yeah, but I, I you can change your view if you want. No, I, I explain, you know, because it just it just makes you cough, and if they don't cough, it's like okay, yeah, well, they don't cough, yeah, 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 and then we'll we'll see how they look, you know, a couple years from now, and it, I could okay. reasonably say, say they, it was say they look, smoke. say they look, say they okay, wait, 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 so now you're adding something else in now. Now you're saying there is a, some kind of outcome that needs to be measured through, through time in order to conclude one way or another. It doesn't need to, but it's definitely a factor. Wait, so, okay, so it's a factor. Okay, great. So let's say we didn't have that factor both for you and both for them. Yeah, now, so then now I what just, do we say? Yeah, so if we don't have those factors, all we have left is to, to again, to look inward and, and to great. go by how we so feel. So let's say someone looks inward and goes by how they feel and says smoking's great. Are they being just as rational as you are epistemically? Uh, yeah, if given the other factors I said are not present. Yeah. Okay. Great. So there, are, so there are people like that. They smoke. They look inward. They say it feels great. So you yeah. would, you would concede that okay, yeah. what they're doing is okay. They're being they're being they're operating rationally, and they're coming yeah, because, to a rational conclusion. What, yeah. what would you say? What would you say about smoking for them? I, I would say I would say that that's that's them doing what they feel is best, and 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 best. those are the no, same I know people. in terms of in terms of uh, I didn't ask you if, in terms. That's a descriptive answer. I didn't say. 
if what they were doing descriptively. I'm asking you, what would you say in terms of if they should be doing that for if their goal is for health? Like, would you say that, okay, their, their inference is valid and they should continue to smoke because based on everything they know, they're making the correct decision with regards to smoke? Yes. And those are the okay, same people cool. who... And, and those are the same people who live past 100 as a smoker, too. So that's why. Wait, I that's the separate way. How do you know that? How do you know? That? Whoa, now that's a claim. That's that. Now you've made an empirical claim, my friend. Well, well that's an educated you know that? guess. I'm not I'm not saying flat out. Like, <laughs> OK, well, so you're so you're making an educated guess. Based, is it based on anything other than you looking inward? It's based on, again, common sense and, you know, intuition. Oh, intuition. What is and, that, and how does that work? How does how do you go that use that to and to make an empirical claim about how these people are the ones that are smoking and living past 100? Yeah, again, common sense, because if you look at people who who smoke and they have problems and if people who smoke and don't have problems, you can only assume that people who don't have the problems are going to live, you know, pretty long. Pretty long. No, that's on, not on, true. Like, as a people, cigarette smoker. As a cigarette smoker. No, no, that's just you speculating. Um, and there, are, in, in fact, empirically, that actually doesn't turn out to be the case. A lot of these, sm these smokers who get to 100 past, they absolutely have problems. Um, but they are addicted to smoke. Um, so besides the fact that that's incorrect, let's just, let's, be, we don't even have to go that far. Um, you've made, see, you were, you were, you were, you were doing fine with your consistency. You came to ridiculous places. But you, you extended that to make a claim. So again, we have, so just so, just so everyone's clear on it, you made a claim that you, you, you got to the point where, okay, if they look inward and they think the smoke belongs in their lungs, then they, and none of the factors are in place. They're 21 plus, they're not doing it for any of the factors you're listed. You're, you're doing, you're, you're, they're basically equivalent to you in terms of their life experience. They don't cough. They look inward and they say, okay, the smoke is, good for my lungs, good for my heart, it belongs there. You would say that they are being rational and they should continue smoking. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. All and, right, and, so just to... And, and, well, well it, it, it depends. Again, if they start, if they start seeing problems... Then they should. No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't add any of that in. We didn't talk about any outcomes yet. We, we can get to outcomes, but we didn't talk. So right now, there's no out outcomes either way on the table. There's no outcomes this way or that way. Right now, all we, we, all we have is we have a group of people who are 21 plus, who have similar life experiences to you. They look inward and they say, the smoke belongs in my lungs. Good, good for my lungs, good for my heart. Should they continue smoking on your view? So you're asking me if they should continue smoking? Yeah, on your view, if you had to give a recommendation. So, okay, so so here's why I can't answer that, and here's why. Because I can't look into the future and see if they get problems from it eventually. Why did you just answer it then? <laughs> what do you mean? You, I mean, you just answered, and then you say you can't answer it. We can go with – don't worry. We can attack – we can go with both ways and why it's silly. But it's, i just like to point out that you actually did give an answer – and then you, and then you, at this point, you're deciding that you can't answer. Well, yeah, because then I realized that, that they could, they could eventually get problems. So like, if you, mm. if I look in the future and see that they got, you know, problems from it, then I would, I would tell them they shouldn't tell because I could. Yeah. But the issue with that is, it. look, the issue with that is the opposite is also true in the future. You don't know, you don't know, again, you don't know with these people, if they're going to get problems in the future or if they're going to get benefits in the future. It could also be that the smoking gives them benefits in the future. You are, you don't you can't who's playing music? Um, so who is playing music? Is there a rhythm bot in here? Seriously, guys, please no don't idea. do that. To me, no yeah, Come on, please don't dude. Do the Come on. muted it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. What are we? What are we debating? Oh, okay. Who was it right. who actually turned on the bot? Who did that? Sam Sam D. You can come back next week. Wait, what? I didn't do shit. What? Sorry, continue. Continue. All right, cool. So <clears throat> let's say we so again, so when you're talking about smoking and future outcomes, you you can have negative outcomes and you can have positive outcomes, right? 
you don't know in the future if smoking will give you negative outcomes or positive outcomes. So right now we're just working based on what we have available, which is just our intuition and common sense, quote unquote, as you've defined it. And so when I asked you what that is, you said, well, you look inward and you come to a conclusion. So they look inward and come to a conclusion about smoking in their lungs and say, okay, I looked inward. I look at smoking in my lungs. I conclude that it belongs in my lungs. I conclude that it's good for my heart. Are you saying that they are being rational and they should continue smoking based on the available evidence that they have? So they're, they're being rational in the sense that they're using good uh, uh, reasoning. But like I said, I, I don't believe what they believe. So if you ask someone like me, I would say that, that what they're doing is not good because I'm someone who wait, believes smoking wait. is bad. Wait, do you believe it's bad when, when you say they're doing, when you say you have a different belief and come to different conclusions um, or that smoking is bad? Ever, and when I asked you why smoking is bad, you gave me an answer that pertained to yourself. It didn't pertain to them. Again, I'm not asking you if, sm- if you should smoke or not. I'm asking you if they should continue smoking. You said that what I would do is look inward into myself and see if the smoke belongs there. And, and you conclude that the smoke does not belong there. Now, that would give you an answer for you that you should not continue smoking. But let's say someone didn't. So let's say that, or even someone, or even you, let's say if you didn't, let's say you concluded that smoking should belong in my lungs. Does that give you a reason that smoking does belong in your lungs? And that's why I'm giving you an example from other people, because you can't use this answer like, oh, well, I have a different experience, or, oh, I have a completely different conclusion that smoking is bad because of these, these things. Again, I'm not asking about you, I'm asking about them. Or unless you have a view that, well, my experience somehow denotes what everyone else should do. My experience with smoke in my lungs somehow extends the recommendation to everyone else, regardless of their experience. You can take that view as well. But right now, you're not actually answering the question. Right now, you're not... The fact that you have an experience one way or another, you haven't explained why that gives the recommendation to others when they've had an opposite experience. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, it's also, it's an issue of believing, right? Like if you tell me, if someone tells me that I would have a hard time believing them in the first place. So I couldn't, I couldn't possibly right. tell say them. we knew, say we knew they were yeah. telling the truth. Say we knew that they were really looking inward and saying, okay, yeah, wow. The smoke really belongs to my lungs. Feel great. Do things great. Smoke full. It's good for my heart. Um, say we know that they, you know, every, let's say we had a hypothetical lie detector that really could tell you the truth. They're, they're telling you the truth when they say this. Okay, so the issue with that is in that scenario, yes, I would, I would, uh, I would say that they should, you know, I'd say all the power to them, but we don't live in that so kind they, of reality. Don't say all the power to them. Just, just be clear about what you're saying. You're saying, well, they should continue smoking. Yeah, but we don't live in that okay, reality cool. where we can yeah. know if they're telling the, if they're you know completely being honest or if they're completely like you know if I can believe okay. them. Okay, them. I, I disagree. I think there, I think we we do live in that reality, and there are plenty of people who who believe this, and they and they're real and they're dead dead serious but regardless if they were we don't need to go we don't need to i don't need to go empirical on you and show that oh that people who actually do believe smoking is healthy there are, I mean, it's it's clearly true you can act, you can go on you can always say like people are just going to be lying we could turn it on to you and say okay well maybe maybe you're lying should they be rational then because but we don't need that we could just say if if they are telling the truth if they are actually believing uh what they are saying you would say that they should continue smoking uh, yeah, if, if I knew for a fact that, uh, you know, what they were saying is true and they're being honest. And- okay, so you would say you continue some- Okay, cool. So there are, <laughs> there are people who really do believe this, by the way. Like, I just want to, I just want to, I'm not going to be able to prove this to you because you can always go to like some kind of, you can always go to some kind of realm where you say like, oh, I don't believe, if, if they say X, I don't believe what they say. Um, but I just want to let you know that there are people who do this and that there's a whole conspiracy that there's a whole anti-smoking conspiracy that is uh, trying to get them to stop smoking and they would label you as people like that. But anyway. OK, so your so the issue I have is your so your epistemology gets you to conclude that a number of a good amounts of people should continue smoking. If that's the view you want to take, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but. That's the issue with your epistemic standard. Your epistemic standard just boils down to, and we can continue. We can. We don't have to stop with smoking. You can just continue with other things too. For example, eating your own fecal matter, um, or drinking your own urine. There are people who, there are people who drink their own urine, right? 
And they, I mean, I can go give you, there's a whole documentary on this. And they have looked inwards and they believe that the urine belongs in their mouth, in their, in their body, in their stomach. And what, with your epistemic standard, would you not say that they should continue drinking their own urine? Okay, so okay, so I'm gonna answer that. I'm not. I'm not gonna ramble. Don't worry. Uh, I, I just want to make something clear. Uh, when it comes to to smoking, that's something that is you know created by man in order to entice uh, people, and so it's coming from a place of manipulation. So just because people say well, now that you're adding something, ooh, ooh, the last minute weasel door. Now you're going back and trying to add something else in. Ooh. Okay, we can deal with that, but I, I just want you to recognize that you're trying to grasp for symmetry breakers now. After I'm not, you've I'm come not, to, you've no. already get, you've already come no. to the conclusion. Now you're trying to go back to. Okay, so are you, do you think that makes a difference in terms of whether they're being rational or not? If they if they go to their experience, and the problem is this: that they're being rational. Smoke. They're being rational, but they've been brainwashed. No, say they weren't. They say they had what? natural they smoke. What? Say they found. Say they made. Say they just made it themselves out of natural materials. I mean, well, that's not practically just coming up with this well, hypothetical. Say, that say, has nothing say to it do was. With reality. Doesn't it doesn't matter. Say say they did it. There are people who do that, by the way. But I don't even need to go there. Like, say say they just made their own tobacco. They tobacco is a natural substance. Their tobacco is, you can collect it. Okay, uh, so you you're talking make, about okay. So, so you're talking about the population of people on Earth who who make their own <laughs> and w without without any knowledge whatsoever. What the fuck? What's that noise? Okay. Okay. So you're saying yeah, the people, it's very the population of people on Earth who have who have not. What the fuck is that noise? All right. The people on on Earth who have not been uh, told anything about smoking. They've never been told anything about cigarettes or tobacco or anything and they literally have lived in nature and they just found out how to make <laughs> like something to smoke mm -hmm. out of you're talking about that yeah yeah so then so, and so there are okay. no we can we could wand away all that stuff you just said about like this whole yeah man-made yeah. thing okay so man well it is man-made in this case it's just not uh some kind of uh corporate made thing and they smoke and they say wow this this smoke belongs in my lungs okay so what percent of people do you think have never heard about cigarettes? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant because it doesn't, an, oh, doesn't have any. Yep. Yeah, so be, the answer to that question doesn't, is not necessary for you to answer my question. That's why it's irrelevant. So whether, okay, whether I, it's 1%, 2%, 0.01%, whether it's 100%, all of those things are, are not relevant for you to be able to answer my question on your epistemic view. Unless you have an epistemic view that hinges on the percentage of the population somehow actually doing something. Which you haven't provided. Okay, so do you understand? Okay, so I'm sure you know what outliers are, right? I, I absolutely know what outliers are, but for for yeah, this yeah. specific question, that's irrelevant as well because we're talking about that specific population. So all of those quote unquote outliers would actually not be outliers in the way I phrase the question. No, because if we're talking about outliers in this context, I could say that okay, no, well, those okay. people are they're just like outliers. They're no, just fucking we're talking. Weird. We're know, talking. We're nation. talking. We're not. We're yeah, but the question is about them specifically. If you have an outlier and you're, an and you're asking a question related to some kind of sample that is not them, okay, fine. But right now my question specifically is about them. So everyone else is the outlier to the question, not the other way around. Okay. So, so yeah. let's say there's 100 people in nature right now, okay? They've never heard about cigarettes. Mm -hmm. They've never heard about anything like that. And they just made their own cigarettes right now in nature. Yeah, so and they started all, smoking like chimneys. See. Okay, so first of all... It doesn't matter. Don't say you have yet to see. Is. Nope, don't say you have yet to see the evidence that that exists or not. It doesn't need to exist. That's, that's a dodge. It doesn't need to If you say that, it, it doesn't, doesn't even need to exist for you, for your epistemic standard to give an answer to that. Because that's the whole okay. point of epistemic okay. standards. They give answers to things. They could give answers to things that would not even exist yet. They, that could ex exist in the future that we don't even know exist yet. So okay. if you okay. don't, if you give an answer like that, that's a dodge. I want to be very clear. Okay. So, so my question okay, so, is, yeah, go ahead. So in your, so in this alternate reality, according to, to what you want it to be, yes, I would say that, that they're being rational. Sure. They're but being rational. The so that they should, and they, and you would recommend, and you would recommend that they continue smoking. Well, if that was the if if, if that uh, reality was the case, I would say that they're just mentally ill and they're a freak of nature. Freak wait, of nature. why are they meant? To, wait. 
why are they mentally ill? Because I, I, we're going back to the common sense and intuition thing. It's like, it's like yeah, they're using their common sense and intuition. Why are they being mentally ill? Because I, because they differ from you. I know because they differ from ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population. Okay, say they, everyone. They say say ninety nine point say ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population where we were all smoking with natural substances. Okay, well that's not what well, that's not the reality we live in. Irrel, that's a dodge. That's dodge number two. All right, we're gonna uh, try I, again. I don't know how that's okay. a dodge. That's but, dodge number. Uh, okay. The reason, yeah, sure. So the reason it, it's a dodge is because you've provided an epistemic standard that answers certain things, and it will give certain answers to certain questions. And notice how the the scenario doesn't need to actually exist for it to provide an answer. So it's irrelevant whether the situation is the case or is not the case that that ninety nine percent of the population is this way or that not way. Your epistemic standard still provides answers to those questions regardless of whether they exist or not. So you are completely able to answer that question regardless of whether it is this way or that way with respect to if they are actually in the real world. So you asking if they're in the real world or you pointing out that they're in the real world or not is a dodge because it's, a, it's not necessary for your epistemic standard to answer that question. Does that make sense? It's like saying, look, I, I think that if someone picks their nose, then they give the right answer. Right. Let's say I just said something just as let's say I said something just as silly as your epistemic standards say, OK, well, whether I give the right answer or not depends on whether I pick my nose. And then you say, OK, well, let's say that, you know, let's say that I pick my nose. I say, OK, I pick my nose. And then I said, the, the earth is flat. Am I now right? And then you said, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. But in the real world, when people say if the earth is flat, they didn't say it right after picking their nose. Okay, so that doesn't happen in the real world. In the real world, people, when people say the earth is flat, they didn't actually do it after they picked their nose. That doesn't answer, that's a dodge. That doesn't answer the question because the point is, if they did pick their nose, your, that epistemic standard would say they're right. So you simply saying, okay, well, hey, they're not picking their nose in the real world, that is a dodge to the question, if they did pick their nose, would they be right? Okay, so, okay, l l l l okay, so you gave me an example, let me give you an example. So, if there's 100 people on Earth, if you're, in your hypothetical, there's 100 people on Earth. No, I, in they, my hypothetical, I changed the no, 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 I, in my hypothetical, that's what we're all doing. In my hypothetical, this is the whole population. In my, hypothet okay, well, in my hypothetical what? now, what? that's what we're all, that's what we're all doing. Now, I, my question to you is, if we were all doing this, if we were all having, this, having these, this natural smoke or whatever, we're making it ourselves, and we're all smoking like chimneys, would you say that the rational thing for us to do is continue smoking? If we looked into ourselves, we were over 21, we looked into ourselves and said, oh, the smoke belongs in our lungs. Okay, you said if 99.99%, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. that's so, what we're all doing. So in a hypothetical, I, I would not have this stance. I would have a different stance because of the hypothetical. Do you understand? Do you understand? What would your answer be then? My answer would be that it's it's bad because that would be a re that would be an alternate reality where I have different reasons for believing wait, certain wait. things. Wait, you would say that it's bad? If you, okay. <sighs> okay. Can you can you say like what you're trying to say again, please? Sure. So <clears throat> So look, so let's say we were in a world where, look, I'm just going by with the things you've given me. You've given me 21. So let's say we live in the world where everyone is 21 or up. You've given me certain ex life experiences that would invalidate their epistemology. Let's say everyone in this world doesn't have those experiences. Then you said, then you gave me another attempt at a breaker. You said, okay, well, it's like corporate made and it's like trying to influence people. Okay, so let's say none of the cigarettes were corporate made. Let's say they were, say they say they weren't corporate made or anything like that. So, and let's say they were natural and everyone was smoking like chimneys. So now what's your, what's your answer? And they, it, and they all looked inward and they say they smoke belongs in my lungs. Should they continue doing it or not? So in that, in that situation, would the smoking still be like a bad, would it be a bad thing for people or is it just like, is it good for them? Like, or is it whatever, for... whatever is, whatever, whatever, let's whatever is, no, I'm just asking how you would evaluate it. I mean, I would, I would look, I would eval I would give a different answer. I would, I would evaluate it as to, I would evaluate it 
um, as being bad because I don't think those things in the hypothetical change the my epistemic standard, or ch and I don't think and I think or nor are the things that are leaping over the bounds of my epistemic standard, such as data and evidence. But you've rejected evidence, you've rejected studies, you've rejected meta-explanations, um, and you're just going based on intuition. And so I'm just asking you, based on your epistemic standard, if these were the case, what would you not if you were in the situation? If you were looking, you're, you're external to the situation, you're looking at the situation, what would you say based on your epistemic standard? If 100% if if of people smoked cigarettes and they felt it, they needed it. They, and no, I didn't feel they needed it. They just looked inward and said, oh, the smoke belongs in my lungs. It's, this seems like a good thing. Okay. And, and how did they come to uh, know about cigarettes? Does that matter? Yeah, it matters a lot. How does it matter? Nothing you've given me um, in your symmetry breakers hinged on it coming on the way they've come to know about it. Let's say they just naturally yeah, because... discovered it. Oh, okay. So naturally discovered it. So if they naturally discover it, then and it's something that's bad for them, then it's still bad for them. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, that's true, but we don't know that if it's... Okay, so again, that's not a non-answer because you've said if it's bad for them. So we don't, yeah, I can say that to you. If it's bad for you, we're sure. But the question is hinging on how do we know that it's bad? So you adding then that it's bad, it doesn't, is, is another, again, that's another dodge. So the question is all about how we know, how we're coming okay. to a conclusion that it's bad. So you, okay. I don't want to hear if it's bad because we're, the whole conversation is about what factors are we using to make an inference about if it's bad or not. Okay. Right? okay. Okay. So in a world where it's, it's found in nature and people like, let's say early humans, they come across it and they look inward and they feel that they, they want to smoke cigarettes. They just, they're just found in nature. And then, and, mm -hmm. then, and you're asking me if they're being rational, right? Yeah. They're, they're, are they being as rational as you are uh, when they yes, use they that are. inference yes, to continue? Are. Okay, cool. Yes, so, all right, so that's that's the pro that's a huge problem for you for you for your epistemic. You might not see it as such, but that's a huge problem with having that epistemic standard. Now we can continue. We can go to we we don't have to stop at smoking. We can go to drinking your own piss. Um, so, for example, let's say someone wants to drink their own urine, and they view it as that belongs in my mouth. That belongs in my in my body. Okay, but how did they? How, okay, so. How did they um, gain the, the knowledge that they, that they feel they want to drink their own urine? Let's say they just decided that they wanted to. They just decided they wanted to. So you're saying they just yeah, one day sure. felt, you know what, I'm just going to. So you're saying yeah. uh, society didn't tell them, hey, that's good for you or, you know. They no, 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 not for societal influences. No, no, no. No, they just decided they wanted to. Okay. Well, that person to me, like. If you ask me, I can't relate to that person, but I would say that their, their rationale is something that I would use for my life, but I would say that their rationale for them is, is just, it, it's correct, but it's, it leads to a weird conclusion that I disagree with. Mm-hmm. And you, okay, yeah, and we could continue so they, going. We don't have to stop with urine. We can go to feces, eat, eating, yeah. if they wanted to yeah. eat their own feces. Yeah, yeah. So, if, so here's what I would suggest. If you have an epistemic standard, and someone else can, and you're coming to the conclusion that someone, other people are using that same epistemic standard to come to conclusions that you can clearly disagree with. That's called a reductio. Um, you're you're tr trying to apply a standard consistently, and it's coming to conclusions that are contradictory. It's coming to conclusions that you're clearly in this conversation uncomfortable with. Um, I would advise you to rethink about your epistemic standard to reanalyze that because well, well, it's clear to everyone that these things that you've added are not are not good reasons to think one thing is a good reason to lean toward one direction or another in terms of being healthy or not. Well, no, here's the thing. When you give me these hypotheticals, you talk about reality. I don't live in that reality. That's why I still have this point of view. It's a, it's a, again, it's a, okay. Pretend it's in reality tomorrow. By the way, these things are in reality now too. It's not like these things aren't in reality. There are people, there are tribes who have found, who have found smoking. And they haven't done it with him. They found it without. Um, they found it without these like mega corporations. There are people who have come to just happen to come to the conclusion to drink their own urine. There are people yeah. who have yeah. just happened to come to the eating their own feces. These, this is not not in reality. It isn't reality, but it's irrelevant. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying point, nature is perfect. Yeah, nature is perfect. 
Yeah, no, no, no. But the point is that nature doesn't actually... We can get into the whole thing in this. I really, I, I do want to diverge a little bit just to get you off this meme because nature, it doesn't proxy health. Like, I just need to get that meme off the table. In fact, there are ways that nature proxies unhealth as we consider it. That nature that we evolve. Wait, hello? I'm not hearing uh, anyone right now. I don't know if you cut out. I think this was fucked up. We just have to wait for Avi to come. Yeah, I'm not hearing him either. It sounds like you cut out in the middle of your sentence, Avi. Was like, wait, I can hear Avi clearly. Uh, oh, leave, leave and rejoin. I can't hear any. I can't He's not hear. Even oh, okay. There we go. He's lighting up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, I wanted to. I just wanted to get you off this um, heuristic of proxying nature. Um, nature doesn't inherently proxy health. Nature, in fact, some some parts of nature actually proxy unhealth, as we consider that we've evolved in certain ways to be unhealthy, and that was what nature. That was the natural thing, and there are good reasons for why we un we evolved to be unhealthy. Um, so your this idea of proxying nature as a way of evaluating health, it doesn't actually work. Okay, so can you give me some examples of things that proxy unhealth from nature? And yeah, sure. sure. And it has to do with things, but it has to do with things that are not created uh, by the corporate field that try to yeah, manipulate you and anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so there are some things in nature that are unhealthy. Uh, sure, so there are some nature some things in nature that are good for proxying uh, reproductive fitness. So we can look at things like high calorie uh, fat, meat, um, things like that, that may be, may be beneficial in certain contexts. Uh, however, they can cause cardiovascular disease. And that actually is something that nature would be, that nature in some contexts, especially in resource uh, intensive contexts, would be great, would be, would, it would be great. On the population level, when people get old, they end up being resource strange. They consume more resources than others. And so there are at least protonta reasons that you would want to have natural ways of killing these individuals off um, so that they don't consume the resources anymore. They don't uh, end up being resource drains from other, pro from other populations so that the resources can continue to be used for the young, healthy, and fit, and those that are going to reproduce. This, is especially, this becomes especially more uh, re more. Um, of a of a selective pressure when the environment is more resource intensive, and so the populations that where people are healthy into their old age and continue being healthy into their old age, they actually in certain environments they naturally end up doing worse, and they end up doing better when they evolve to be unhealthy and die. So it, there isn't this universal thing where nature proxies health in old age. Sometimes nature proxies unhealth in old age. And we should not, we should be avoiding the natural thing, depending on the context, depending on what thing we're talking about. Okay, so you just said uh, that the reason that you gave proxies health is because you, you, because of this theory that um, the earth is trying to have population. No, no. I, I'm just responding to your proxy. You're trying to invoke a proxy for nature. I'm just, I'm, besides, we can use that. We can work with that proxy. I've already worked with that proxy. And you've said that, oh, well, they're being rational um, if, they, if they smoke in that case. But then you tried to say, oh, it's not real, though. Um, as if that somehow deflates the problem of your epistemic standard. It doesn't. You're just in the same problem, whether it's a real or a hypothetical scenario. It doesn't get you out of that. This is a secondary point that I'm making. The secondary point that I'm making is, in the real world, that actually doesn't even work as a symmetry breaker. Sometimes it's a symmetry maker. Sometimes nature actually does proxy for unhealth and not health. I'm just responding to your standard. I'm not giving you a standard of my own. Okay, well, I'd have to, I'd have to see, I'd have to know for sure that, you know, that meat and, every, and all that stuff causes atherosclerosis. Sure, we can, but again, that's fine, but again, if your only standard for knowing these things or having a reason to lean in these things are you looking inward into yourself and deciding if it belongs in your belly, we're going to have a very hard time. Yeah, but my point would still stand uh, um, because I would look inward and, and say, that, say that I want the meat. 
You're talking about something right. external. Right. right, right. Yeah, so my the problem with that, so again, yeah, I, we understand what your standard is, but the problem is if you apply that standard consistently, you get to this place where you are going to say, oh, it's fine for people to smoke. It's fine for certain people to consume their own urine. It's fine. They're being rational if they consume their own feces. All of those things are places you're going to end up in. And but, you could continue to have that standard if you want. And it's, it's, but and no one, everyone's going to see through the bullshit. Everyone's going to see through that you're just invoking this consistent standard because you're uncomfortable about the data and where the data will lead you. Or, so it's, I mean, you can continue it. That's fine. It's just everyone, no one here is, is going to look at that and say, oh, wow, he's got a pretty reasonable epistemic standard for believing the things he does. Like, no, everyone's just going to say that you're just being a clown. Well, I, I could still cite to nature and say that it's good, but th th there's still no, outliers. You can't. There, there can be outliers. There can be outliers. In no, anything. you, you, you can can't, you can't cite overall. to nature for out. No, no, uh, you can't do that either. You would have to. So can't, you actually can't do that either. And if you want, you think you can do that, you, I would, I would encourage you to try. Go ahead line up the things line up, especially, especially in old age, line up the, 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 the aspects of nature. Go ahead, light up all the protonto reasons and try to summate them together. Well, what if I told you that my worldview was that we are supposed to look inward and that some people are just meant to do things that are less effective than others? Wait. So in order to come to the truth, we are supposed to look inward, but other people are not supposed to look inward. Is that what you're saying? No, we're all supposed to look inward, but some people are going to have a harder time than others. Okay, let's say they are not having a hard time looking inward. Let's say they have a great and very easy time looking inward and they say the smoke belongs in their lungs. Okay. You said they're not having a hard time, right? So why No, they're not. They're having just as they're having just as much of a time as you are. Okay, but again, uh, you so you're saying okay, are are you sure smoking is found in nature? Like I don't really know. There are tribes people who do smoke. Here, like we can look it up. Um but it's irrelevant again. Again, when you keep asking this, it, it, it's actually, I, I, you're not appreciating how irrelevant this question is. Okay, so again, you say that, oh, well, what about people who, you know, eat their own feces or, or they, they find smoke in nature? These are like outliers and th they're, even though they're a part of nature, I could have a worldview that yeah, says Native that. Yeah, Native Americans, is... by the way, Native, Native Americans, Native Americans smoke from pipes. They, they smoke tobacco. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Again, uh, again. Tobacco mixed with herbs, barks, plant matter. I mean, th there are plenty of, there are plenty of tribes who have discovered smoking without any corporate in influence. Um, and they, and they've been smoking. It's just, yeah. And tobacco has been discovered yeah. long before the smoking industry existed. Yeah, that's fine. And, Again, they fell into a trap. Even though they're looking inward, nature decided that you know they fell into a trap, and nature is not perfect. And some how do you know? Gonna, wait, how do you know they? How do you know they fell into a trap? Well, maybe they fell they, into something yeah. good. Well, yeah. Given that we that you know that it caused them problems, but you know if they didn't have wait, how do you know? All, it wait, wait, how do you know? How do you know it causes them problems? I'm not saying for sure it did. I'm saying if they ended up having. How, why problems, are you leaning? Why are you leaning that it causes them problems? I'm not, I'm not leaning. I thought we were talking about like, if it was bad for them, if they had problems. No, no, problems. we're not talking about if it was bad for them. We're, 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 again, the whole conversation is about how we're getting to the end. Remember, our whole conversation is evaluating how you look at these things. Okay. Yeah, so how do you know that they fell into a trap? No, again, I was saying that given that it was bad for them. Okay, so we're not, okay, so again, this whole conversation is not about if it's bad for them. Okay. If it was bad for them, we just have our answer, right? Yeah. So there's no, I, I don't want to hear that yeah. again. Like, again, again, so there's no, there's no point of you saying that. This whole conversation is about how we evaluate if things are good or bad for us. So I don't want to hear, well, if it was bad for them or if it was good for them, that's, that's, there's no reason for you to even mention this. Yeah, okay. This whole conversation yeah, is about okay. how we come to, to leaning in one direction or another. So. Again, we have people who have naturally discovered smoking. Native Americans naturally discover smoking. Now, okay. Okay. They've clearly, they clearly continue doing it. So these Native Americans tell you, like, oh, we've looked in where it belongs in our lung. Get some of that smoke. Should they continue smoking? 
so if you're asking me, I would say like, it depends what, what it does for them. Like it depends if they get benefits from it or not, or if they see like problems with it, if they get problems from it. Okay. So how, are, okay. So let's say, let's say they just say, all the information you have right now, again, all the information, you don't have any future information where you can look at outcomes. All the information is they have naturally discovered they're over 21. They don't have the life experiences that you've listed that, that disqualify them. They found na smoking naturally, and they're, they say it belongs in, in my lungs. What's your recommendation? Should they continue or not? Based just on that information. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't have to put it up. Yeah, uh, fo uh, yeah, just follow nature, yeah. Okay, so they just continue to, so your recommendation would be to continue to smoke. Yeah, because as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to those things that are naturally found in nature, they're probably not like, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming that they might not be bad, they might, they might be bad, I'm not sure. That would sure, be a but... terrible assumption. It would be a terrible assumption that they might not be bad because they're found in nature. There are, there are numerous things. That, in fact, I wouldn't even make the, especially when it comes to health and old age, I wouldn't even make the heuristic that overall it's, it's good. And in fact, there are reasons you can say that nature is overall bad for aging and old age, for having health and old age. Um, but sure. So, so just to be clear, so you would say continue to smoke? Uh, in that context, yes. In that okay, context, cool. In that context. Yeah, and if, and if they were drinking their own, their own urine for the, same, for the same reasons? Okay, let me explain like, something to you. So I'm Wait, I'm can saying... you just answer the question? So them, well, again, so you're saying I can't look in the future, right? I can't know if it's good for them or not? You know, like just how we evaluate everything. You know, generally speaking, when we evaluate things, we are, don't have a crystal globe to look in the future to see if things are bad. Like when I ask you, okay, well, is X, Y, Z bad for you? you? If you were able to just give me a crystal globe and just say, oh, I looked and saw their future. Like, okay, there wouldn't be a point of me asking you that question. So look. Let's say you've answered the smoking question. You've, you've been logically consistent with your hilariously ridiculous epistemic standard. Now we can keep going and show you how even more ridiculous things you're going to bite the bullet on. Someone's drinking their own urine. But is same, same context applies. What's your recommendation? Okay. Continue okay. drinking your own urine? Okay, so it, it's subjective, right? Even though it's nature, it's still subjective. If yeah. you ask that me, doesn't answer the I question. Would, the question is, yes, what's your does. recommendation to them? So my recommendation would be probably not, but again, why? that's my subjective. Wait, thing. wait, wait, why? Because I'm following my nature. It's, it's in my nature. Not no, 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 it's nature. not in. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, but there it's in their nature to drink urine. They, yeah, they've but discovered urine right. drinking yeah, and they think it's good for them. Right. And that's they're not asking anything about you. They, why would you just in virtue of what? In virtue of my nature. So my nature contradicts. Their oh, okay. Nature. So now, okay. So now, okay. So now, okay. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying that, if something, if, if you've come to a conclusion about whether something's healthy for you, then that applies to everyone else. Is that what you're saying? Well, it, de it would depend what, what exactly it is. Okay. So what, what, what do we use to deter separate what applies universally from you and what doesn't? I'm, I'm just giving you my subjective stance. And I'm you're not answering you. the question. I asked you well, yeah. if your subjective stance gives is a pro tanto reason for applying a health recommendation to others, especially when the reasons for your subjective stance are, are, don't exist in others. So, for example, if you say, okay, <clears throat> it's not, it's clearly, the urine clearly doesn't belong in my, in my body. And another person says, oh, the urine clearly does belong in my body. Based so, on what do you so say... Based on what do you say that it is the case that not only is the case it doesn't belong in my body, it doesn't belong in their body either, even when the, the reasons for such are not there. So I wouldn't be able to say flat out that it's bad for them. I would say that it's most likely that it's not good for them. Why? Because according to myself, because according to myself and the vast majority of people, they would say that, that drinking your urine is not a good thing to do. It, it, well, it's not a bad thing to do necessarily, but it, we we don't know if it's good or bad. But okay, we can so make an are educated you, guess that it's bad. Why, in virtue of what, are we making an educated guess that it's bad? In virtue of the vast majority agreeing and common sense and a lot of different things. Okay, say we didn't have the vast majority of people agreeing. Say we just say we just had a population that didn't have a view on urine drinking. 
the, a population that didn't have a view on urine drinking. Yeah, they just didn't have a view. Okay, so in that context, they'd say, "Oh, okay, try it. Let's see what happens." Okay, so then they and then they've tried it, and then you see them drinking their urine, and they say, "Okay, the urine belongs in me." Okay. Would you recommend they and continue after, drinking the urine? Well, yeah, in, in the context of me being in a situation where I have nothing, I have no knowledge of urine or anything. Well, you have, you have, yeah, you, you have, you have, well, no, you, you, again, we, we, you, you have just as much knowledge as you have now. Um, you've, you, you have the knowledge, you, you've, already, you've rejected science. So you, you, that's not, you can't appeal to any of the scientific consensus. You can't appeal to any of those things now because that's not part of your episode. Well, yeah. So you, all you yeah. have is your experience. Yeah, but but you said a population where no one knows anything about urine drinking. So do I know? No, not no one. Not no. No, no, no. I didn't say where no one knows anything about it. It's just that they, for whatever reason, they haven't come to the, they haven't come to a consensus on urine drinking. Not yeah, because they don't know about it. Yeah. Look, yeah, look mean, again, mean? again. It, it's just this. Also, but I mean, we. I'm just showing you the extension of your view. Also, this is ridiculous. Like the thing you've. I want to bring it to your attention that that symmetry breaker is completely ridiculous. It's an it's called it's even a logical fallacy. It's called an appeal for, an appeal to popularity. I'm not going down that route. I can go down that route and show you that it's actually just logically invalid to even mention this. But I'm not going. I just want I'm just going with the flow and showing you where that conclusion lands. We well, I'm not saying therefore should, it's correct. It's it's, it's the they also therefore not. It's, it's also therefore it's also there. It's also not a reason to believe it's more likely to be correct either. But if, if that's all I have access to, then I that's that's the best option for me. No, it's not. It's not all you have access to. There's data. It's just that you've rejected the data, so no, you don't can't it's... rely on that. <laughs> you've rejected science. There's there's also things called science and studies and stuff like that. But like let's. But you re- but that doesn't play a role in your view. It's just your your experience. So let's say, let's say in your experience, you tried drinking. Let's just say you tried drinking urine, and let's say in your experience. Um, it turned out to be an awesome thing for you. You had a great experience. So you, you okay, drank your, your yeah. no, So then the question is, would you, as you are now, would you look at the future you and say, you know what, I recommend the future me keep drinking urine? So in, in this context where I, I'm in 2020 and, I, and one day I decide to drink my own urine and I like it, that's what you're saying? Can I, yeah. can I add a you little a great modification ex- to, the, to the hypo? To the, you, to you, the can, hypo. you can sure. dismiss yeah. it if you don't want it, but obviously he's trying to weasel by, be, by being like, oh, that's not my experience, right? So just want to point out how easy it would be for you to have that experience. Someone, you're, you go to a restaurant regularly, and every time they serve you your favorite drink, they just pee a little in it, and you have a positive experience with it every time. <laughs> Wait, so you're okay. So, if that happens, then what? What's your point? Would you recommend that that continue happening? That that people continue to, to piss in their drink? Drink? Mm hmm. There would be okay. So, are they liking the drink because of the piss or because of the drink itself? We don't, we don't know. It's just that they continue. They it turns out that the great drink. Well, you we can actually say it's because of the piss. Let's say it's because of the piss. Let's say that when they don't have the piss in it, um, that we didn't like it as much and it turns out only the times that they put their own piss in your drink when they served it to you that you ended up liking it okay so you're talking about something that's not based in reality it's it's like... another dodge that's dodge number three i'm getting impatient doesn't matter okay. if it's not based the dot don't don't do it again don't die right, i'm not again. trying to i'm not trying to quote, unquote, all right so here's so again so so the reason it's okay so again the reason it's a dodge is because it's irrelevant that information is irrelevant to you being able to answer the question well so, because if that was whether it's case, real or not real then then answer that your answer would be different then there's no part then answer it don't dodge by saying it's not real okay so, so if it was real mm-hmm and they, real. and they only like okay, and they only like the taste because of the piss. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, it's not it's not even not part of the real world. Actually, there are people who are like that that are part of the real world. But but it's, so it's wrong on two levels. It's wrong as that it makes a difference whether it's real or not real. That's one. And also, it is. There are cases I can show where people do like the taste of their own piss. But anyway, okay, okay. go on. Should we, you recommend that they continue drinking their own urine or not? 
Uh, I would say that I don't know because I don't know what's happening with the piss and the and the drink. It's some kind of mixture. I don't know what's happening. Like I don't I don't have enough knowledge. Why? Okay. Well, you don't know what's happening with the meat either. So why do you? Why do? Why would you say you continue eating? But what? Wait. So okay. So let's say. Let, what, what are the factors that you need to know about? Um, actually, we could just do this right now. So you would be agnostic on urine drinking. Uh, in that in that specific context, yeah, you'd be agnostic. Now let's say it's a, a now let's say it's more than urine drinking. Let's say it's a, wait, you just cut out. What I'm not hearing you. I'll be you, your thing. Did it again. You're gonna have to leave and rejoin. <clears throat> but also, just one thing about his weasel portal. It doesn't matter if it tastes good in virtue of the urine alone or just in virtue of the drink. You said it's just about your experience, right? And if we say the only experience you have to go off is when you've drank this, you've had a good time, you're going to have the same commitment there. Same commitment. Okay, okay. So let's say someone defecates. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so let's say someone defecates into a bowl. Um, so poops in a bowl and then pisses in the bowl and then cook, puts it in an oven and cooks it. Uh, and it makes a nice urine uh, piss. And it turns out that it tastes really good and they have a great experience and they look inward and it say it belongs in me, it belongs in my mouth. Um, would you recommend they continue doing it? So yes, I would until oh, they start seeing problems baby. from it. <laughs> okay. Until they so, start <laughs> You're saying it tastes okay. good to them and they like it? Oh, like, yeah, it tastes good to them you? and they like it. If you liked your own okay. shit, like, All right. why wouldn't we, you keep we, eating we, Okay, okay, okay. I, I mean, this is the first time someone's b bit the bullet on that, so I, I applaud you for your consistency. We've bitten the bullet on eating your own urine uh, fecal matter stew. Oh, how do I if it get tastes good. If it, <laughs> if it tastes good and it's good for you. Okay. Wait, no, 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 no. Ooh, that's a weasel. You just added if it's good for you. Ooh, that's the softest move. Damn. Okay, so no. I Remember I told you that I didn't want to hear if it was good or if it wasn't good? Because that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that if it tasted good, if they looked into themselves and said it belongs in me, it belongs in my mouth, would you recommend they continue well, eating or not? I did not say well, if it was good for them or not. Right. Well, it's simply because I, I'm a believer that, you know, foods that are that are found in nature that taste good are, are probably good for you. That's why I would, I would say okay, that I'm so, kind of so, it's good for you in that context. OK, so so don't say if it's good for you, though, that still doesn't mean that still when you say if it's good for you, I don't again, I don't want to hear if it's good for you, if it's bad for you again, because that's not okay. that, none of that is what I'm saying. It doesn't have anything to do on what I'm saying, if it's good for you or bad for you. Okay, so it was a hypothetical where we don't know if it's good for you or bad for you, right? Of course, of course. That's what all this is about, evaluating what, evaluating our epistemic standard of what we can determine or lean in the direction of it being good or bad for you. So I'm just giving you the facts. I'm dialing the following things in. Number one, they enjoy the taste of the urine fecal stew. Number two, they're 21 plus, just like your criteria. Number three, they don't have life experiences that exclude them, their ability for them to look inward to themselves, as you've given that criteria. Number four, they look inward into themselves and say that this urine fecal matter stew belongs in their mouth and it belongs in their belly. Do you recommend they continue consuming their fecal matter stew, urine stew? Okay, so I, I just have one question to that. Uh, sure. If this if this isn't a population, uh, what what percent of the population is like that? Oh, they're all they're all guzzling down their their urine fecal matter stew. They love it. So you're saying all seven point five billion people on Earth are, are like that? Oh yeah. Let's say if they let's say we we all just well, I, it doesn't. I didn't say anything about the seven point five billion. I was saying this population. But we can ask ask it for both. Uh, yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we so can ask it for both of those cases, cases, actually. No, we don't have to say all people on Earth. We could say just this population. But we could ask it for both of those issues. We could say, okay, so number one, let's take the case where it's just, where it's just the population and all, everyone in that population uh, drinks their urine fecal matter stew. What's your answer for that one? Well, I would need more context. What other context would you need? Because let's say it's a population of like two people. I would say that they're just like, you know, weird. And just okay, different. let's say, let's say, let's say it's okay. Let's say if it's a thousand people. 
a thousand people out of out of all the people on earth that's still pretty weird and, and just you know exclusive and okay. just you haven't yeah. by the way by the way you didn't actually you didn't special specify this in your criteria before you're adding an, another criterion just so you know uh i mean i thought that was uh, do you, do you appreciate that when you look, look you've given me criteria before in your epistemic standard the criteria you've given me was 21 plus You've given me certain criteria for the exclusion of certain life experiences. You've given me, you, you gave me criteria. This is a new criteria that you're trying to introduce to get out of an uncomfortable conclusion. I just want you to appreciate that. Well, well no, I, I, that's why I didn't even mention it. Okay, so let's, so there's a given population um, found in, an in some environments and we are not privy to that population. And it turns out that when we lear learned about it, we found that there are 100,000 pe people in this native population and uh, 999, um, sorry, um, 99,999 people of those 100,000 uh, love drinking their own urine fecal matter stew. Okay, and, and what's your question? Do you recommend they continue doing it or not? So you're saying one person out of that population does not like like doing it. Correct. And is is this hundred thousand people in the the reality of seven point five billion on Earth? How is that relevant? Because again, it would be relativity, right? Like if it's a hundred thousand compared to seven billion on Earth, I could say, well, right, let's, say, let's, say, like let's say let's say weird. Let's say let's say they if they're weird, does that does that factor into your health recommendation? Like they're maybe just, they're, they're maybe the what maybe what yeah yeah but maybe but maybe okay but hold on that I don't see how that changes your recommendation maybe the freak of nature could have a different men could have a different health reaction to the could have a different health outcome to the different things that they're enjoying I mean I don't see how that makes well, a difference well, look can well, you explain can you explain how that makes a can you right so what's your recommendation my recommendation like from my point of view would be well. I don't, I don't know what you guys are doing because you're such a small group of people compared to all the people on earth. But, but from what I know and from what the rest of us on earth know is it's, it's not really like working for us. So all we can say is, okay, well, that's, that's off. That's weird. Wait, wait, we don't. Okay. We don't know when you say working for, um, again, all the, all that we have now is, it's not, it's not that it's not working for us. We don't know. You don't know that it's not working for you. You don't know what the outcomes would be based on your standards. I don't know where, why you would say that, why you introduce that language. But again, so what would your recommendation be? You have to recommend whether they would continue it or stop doing it or just say I'm agnostic. I, I, mean, I have no, no leaning one way or another. So what's your answer? So if it's that small of a population compared to, to 7 billion on Earth, then I'd be forced to say I'm agnostic. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's say all that... Okay, now here's, here's where things get hilarious for you. Let's say all the other population go away. They vanish. They disappear. Now they're 100% the of the population. What's your recommendation? If they're 100% of the population, population, I'd have to okay. know if it's benefiting them. Okay, so now that's, that's weasel number four. So, again, when you say if it's, if it's good for them, if it's bad for them, if it's benefiting for it, is it harming them? This whole conversation is about that. So you've done it again. If you do this one more time, I'm out of the conversation because you're, you're giving off the impression that you're just being a dishonest actor at this point. Well, no, when I say benefiting, I mean, if they're feeling good after doing it and that's, that's oh, okay. My, that's let's say I'm they doing. feel, okay, fine, I'm doing fine. Then, 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 then yeah. So they're, they're feeling good after drinking their own urine fecal matter stew. Do you recommend that they keep doing it? Uh, yeah. If it's happening, if they're feeling good for a long period of time, like I am with meat, then yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So this is the, this is the issue with your epistemic standard. So your epistemic standard is as long as we dial in that people are feeling good, it could literally, re we could literally recommend that it's healthy for just about everything that falls into that category. And it, we clearly, we clearly don't want to have that view. So we clearly need something else as part of our epistemic standard. Um, well, well, would you, <laughs> Isaac's asking, would you recommend the fecal, the fecal matter urine stew? Would you recommend it? To, would you start recommending it to others? If ever, if everyone felt good when they were, when they were consuming the urine fecal matter stew? 
well, no, because that would go against my stance that to look inward. And when I look inward, I don't want to. So why would I recommend it? Just okay. So again, so so no no no. But let's okay. Let's say let's say you discovered you're in fecal matter stew and you looked inward and you you enjoyed it. Me personally. Yeah. Let's say you personally. Okay. So, what's your question? Would you recommend it? Uh, if it would, if it was good for me for a, if I, I didn't felt wait good for and, a long and by when wait wait wait, no, wait, no, wait when you say good okay felt good don't say if it was good for me because that's already putting okay. in yeah okay. so if it, if it felt good and it felt good for a while yeah. uh, would you recommend yeah. would you recommend uh, other people to eat the urine fecal matter stew I I recommend trying it yeah I'd be like hey this is working great for me I mean I, well this feels good to me so hey so, try it out see, okay. see if you like it. Yeah. But okay. Fi- cool. uh, so the so the I'm issue, sure. yeah. So here's so here's so here's the issue. The issue is when you're evaluating health and health outcomes, um, it's clearly insane to have this standard that you have. And the reason it's insane is because it actually works for everything, so long as the enjoyment, so long as a, a gratification or some kind of enjoyment or pleasurable feeling is instantiated when it's being done. And there are clearly examples where that's not healthy, that, ever, that pe- no one has this belief that it's healthy because of evidence and because of science, even if it, there are some things that have those things dialed in. And so there needs to be more to the epistemic standard. Now, you can continue with that epistemic standard if you want, but it's clear, it's very clear that this would justify, it would justify smoking, in, at least in some contexts. It would justify eating your, drinking your urine. It would justify eating your own feces and your own stew in some contexts. Um, and in hypotheticals that people would still want to say no on. And it would just go against every, I mean, it's just an insane view. Um, so I do recommend you go back to the drawing board um, because the epistemic view that you have is just crazy. It's insane. Um, but you can continue doing it if you want. But this is, so who's here? Is Who's listening? I think Ask, you know, ask Yourself is here. And Okay, okay. Kevin's here. Yeah, so this is where you want to go. You want this is how you want to approach people who have views like this. When you people have views that basically hinge health on their immediate um, gratification or consistent gratification, not immediate, not immediate, um, or or consistent, yeah, or or consistent gratification over a short period of time in comparison to their lifetime, which is the case for you. Um, this is where you want to go because this shows just how insane it is. Um, that it, this justifies so many things in, in d- various different contexts that clearly are unhealthy. Um, but it would, yeah. So, I mean, there's not much else to say here. Well, uh, you know, to take it from my point of view, if, you know, as I said before, with the whole thing about studies and stuff, if I don't, if I don't believe in looking at a screen and, and going off that, the only thing I have left to, to consider is, is how I feel. And that's why I go off. Right, and right. Off. That's true. And yep, that's yep, that's true. And that's why it's insane. And here's <laughs> and here's why that view get, ends up in insanity. Well, I mean, you know, you, you've mentioned all the things that are you know bad for you, quote unquote. If you're uh, if, if if it's in nature and you feel inclined to do it, uh, a lot of those were hypotheticals, and a lot of those that of those that are found irrelevant. It's irrelevant. I, I, again, like if, if you say, okay, if you say it's a hypothetical again, I'm done because like it's irrelevant. You pointing out it's a, it's a hypothetical. Uh, you're not appreciating just how irrelevant it is that you keep saying this. You're really not. When you say it's a hypothetical, all you're just saying is that it, it, it's in a certain context that we don't have right now. It's, it's, but it, the point is that even in that context, everyone would view it as insane to make that conclusion. So you pointing out that it's hypothetical is completely irrelevant. But what if I told you my view would change if the hypothetical was true? Then you're being dishonest. If you're, if you, see, here, here's the thing. If you have a, see, that, that would be outright dishonesty. If you have a view and, and you're giving an answer, say, okay, if I say in this hypothetical case, you give answer X. And all of a sudden tomorrow, you give answer Y if the hypothetical turned true tomorrow if it became real world then either you have either one of two things are happening either you have an epistemic standard that hinges the answer on whether something is hypothetical versus real world in which case that's really odd and that's that would be crazy because it's clearly the 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 abstraction itself 
changing into concrete, um, it's very weird how that would change whether something has a health outcome or not. Um, or you're just being intellectually dishonest, which I think is the more accurate conclusion. Okay, and uh, the first thing you, you listed there, can you can you explain that one more time? Please? Yeah, the someone first... could just have the view. Someone well, can have uh, the view I mean, that say it, it might might also just be worth pointing out. Like then he's not talking about his view anymore. We're talking about what his current view says. If uh, if something happens and he changes his view, well then you're talking about a different view, and that's not the view that we're running a critique on, is it? So that's an equivocation. Just switch, wait, just wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Uh, he's saying the hypothetical is the situation that we're talking about isn't in, a, in the real world. And he's saying, he's and saying then, that he'd have a different view if the hypothetical were real. Real. Yeah. He's yeah, saying he would have that, a different view. Yeah. Of so I'm yeah. saying either one of two things are happening. Um, either, not, either, number one, there is a difference between... So he has a different view because there's a different situation. And the only thing different about that situation is it's not a hypothetical anymore. So clearly he has a view that hinges his, his view on whether it's hypothetical or not. That's, that's possibility one. Because the only difference in those two situations is that it's not a hypothetical. There's no other difference in the situation. So he can have that view or he can just be intellectually dishonest. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not purely uh, hinging on the fact that it's not hypothetical. It's hinging it on the fact that... that it, it has well, to be, because well, the only difference in the situation is that it's not a hypothetical. Well, the difference is also that it's not, you know, in reality. That, look, if it, if it was... That's what it means to be. That's what it means to be an unrealistic hypothetical. So, again, so the only difference here, it has to be that that's the case, because the, we're, do, we're just stipulating that that's the only difference. Okay, so can I ask you a quick question? So uh, let's say uh, I believe that, um, okay, well, let me think of a hypothetical here. Um, okay, so let me say I think dragons probably do not exist, okay? And then you say, oh, but how about this hypothetical where uh, some dragon parts are found, uh, you know, buried underneath? It's like, okay, well, then I would probably believe that they 100% did exist. Yeah, what's the problem with that? But notice how yeah, the so, diff but again, yeah. notice how the notice how I'm not hinging now imagine look, so now imagine that you said now imagine you said, okay, in the real world we found dragon parts. Now imagine let's let's imagine that's not a hypothetical that it's the real world. My answer wouldn't change. My answer would stay the same as in the hypothetical in the real world. Because I don't have this view that we should give different answers based on it being a hypothetical or the real world for these types of things. If I did give a different answer, I would say, oh, now I don't believe the dragon exists because it's their real world dragon bones now. Like, I would be even more ridiculous. So the point you're, you should appreciate is that it's, if you have a certain view on a situation that's hypothetical, and the, and the only difference between another situation is that same situation is now not a hypothetical. It's now a real world. If you give a different answer, that's going to be very sketchy. Unless you have some view that where your epistemic standard changes based on it being a hypothetical or not, in which case, that's really fucking weird. Um, or you're just being intellectually dishonest. So if I'm presented with new evidence and that changes my mind, how is that me being dishonest? Okay, so what's being saying. dishonest? Yeah, here's what's, being, what's dishonest. So... What's dishonest is if you give a different answer. So he, again, we have a hypothetical. Look, we have a hypothetical where we have evidence X that leads to... And if I say, hypothetically, if evidence X existed, would you conclude Y? You say no. But if it's in the real world where we have, we have evidence X, would you, lead, would you believe Y? You say yes. So your, your, your answer is different depending on whether the situation is hypothetical or not. So I'm, if you were in the hypothetical where we have evidence X leads to Y, you say no. But in the real world, you woke up tomorrow and you realize that's not a hypothetical, that's real. Evidence X leads to Y, you say yes. And the only difference is the hypothetical. That's either some weird epistemic view, which has no, ba no basis and looks insane, where something is different just because it's hypothetical, or you're just being intellectually dishonest. But Avi, aren't you specifically asking him about the situation where it's actual? I'm asking him about both situations. Presumably, when you ask, like, if this were the case, you're saying if this was actual, right? 
or I can say if it's I don't have to ask say that I could say if it's if it's right, hypothetical but, but, I, I but could right, say if, yeah, if you're sure. saying that you understand that he would just be equivocating by saying well it's only possible right it's just hypothetical it's like you're giving the constraint that this is actual oh yeah yeah if if I was asking it that way sure yeah I so can say if so that's I already has, answered yeah that's a, right that's that's one equivocation between the that's the like possible actual equivocation but then another equivocation is to say well my my view would change if that situation occurred that's an equivocation between your actual view right now and the view that some other being would have who's not you so it's like two different kinds of equivocation that can be happening there yeah okay yeah. so like if if i dial in the yeah so okay so i'm i think i'm appreciating this so if i dial in the constraint okay so if this ha if this would happen and you say and you say <coughs> excuse me if this would happen and you say um, one thing and then you say, oh, but it's a hypothetical, we've already accounted for that constraint. And if, if it was real world, it would be a different thing. But again, we already asked if it, that was already subsumed in the question. If we say if this, this occurred, it seems, it seems like you're not going to be able to get out of this. Um, you're going to have a hard time giving different answers in hypotheticals versus real world scenarios without running into something hilariously problematic. So, so, okay, so when you give these hypotheticals and I give, like, different answers well, and stuff, sorry, do you think Avi, I'm being when contradictory? You, when you say hypothetical and real, like, I'm, I'm just assuming we're talking about, when we're talking about possible worlds, or we're just talking about which ones are actual and which is possible, right? So it's like, you're, you're always giving the one where, let's say this was actual. Yeah, yeah, if I say, let's say this was actual, when I give the hypothetical. Okay, and then so, it, once he says, okay. and when, when you say, oh, but that's not, that's not actual, if it were actual, I wouldn't do that. Now you're just actually contradicting yourself with respect to the question I'm asking. Because if you give a different answer, that question is, it actually just is, well, this is hypothetical, but if, what, the, what it is is, oh, if this possible thing were actual. That's all I'm saying. If this possible thing were actual, what would your answer be? And then you turn around and give a different answer and say, oh, but it's just a possible thing, not an actual thing. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not saying. Oh, but it's possible. The thing is, it's you know, my my truth and my my stance hinges on what reality is. So if you give me a hypothetical, I say, okay, well, in that in that hypothetical, okay, I might think differently. But the reason I think this right now, reality is that. Okay, but again, we've we've dialed that in already in the question. It doesn't work. So we've dialed in if this possible thing were actual. If this possible thing were actual, what would you say? And you say X. And then you say, well, it's just possible, not actual, so therefore, not X. That's a contradiction. Uh, sorry, how is that a contradiction? Yeah, because you're affirming and negating a proposition at the same time. Yeah, but so you're, you're saying, you're saying, no, they aren't. They're in the same possible scenario. If we ask, if this, po if this possible scenario uh, were is actual and not and no longer possible you say x and then you say you turn around and say oh but it's this possible scenario um if it if it, it's just because it's possible if it were actually actual i would say not x that's a contradiction that's an affirmation of a proposition and a negation based on the um, same set of circumstances i i okay i'm sorry I, I really like don't see how that's a contradiction still even after you've explained it to me so I, I really, I don't know what to say. Yeah, so say we have a possible world that is, so we have a world that's possible, but not actual. And then I ask you, if that possible world were actual, would you say X or not X? And then you say, I say X. And then you say, well, I'm saying x but now i want to change my view to not x um and i say oh because that's an actual world but if it were a possible world if it became actual it would be not x if it became not if it the fact that it's not real if it became real i would now say not x we've already asked that question is the point the point is when i give you a hypothetical that's already subsumed in the question i'm already asking you if this thing were actual 
So you are just answering with the same set of circumstances. You're asking, you're just answering with if it's actual again. So you saying X and not X, you're just, you're answering, you're basically just, you are answering X and not X. Because I'm asking you in one case, if this were actual, do you say X or not X? And you say X. And then in the, you turn around the same sentence and you say, oh, it's not actual. But if it were actual, I would say not X. That's a contradiction. Okay, so just to be clear, essentially what you're saying that I'm saying is, okay, am I saying X and not X essentially? Is that, that what I'm saying? Yeah, what you're, what you're saying boils down to X and not X. But isn't what I'm saying actually, hey, uh, if Y, then X, and if K, then not X? No, because in both cases, we said Y. Is that if Y? We stipulated by if Y, and then you turn around and say, oh, but the only reason is because Y is not real, but if it were real, then not X. That's a contradiction. Okay. So I, I hear what you're saying. Like, I'm paying attention. I just, you know, I, I really just don't understand still, but, you know. Well, look, if I say everyone, it, I, when I give you the hypothetical, if everyone enjoyed their urine fecal matter stew, what I'm saying is if that possibility was actual, if that possibility exists, was real, then you say, oh, they should do that. It's healthy. And then you turn around and say, oh, but that's not the real world. So I'm giving a different answer. And if it were real, then I'll continue to give a different answer. If you say, oh, if it were real, then because it's not real, if it were real, I would say it's not healthy. That's a contradiction because I've already, that's already been accounted for in the question when I ask you a hypothetical. Yeah, but what's wrong with saying uh, if this, then that, and if that, then this other thing? No, again, I'm saying, I'm saying if Y, then X. You say, you say in one case, if Y, then X. And then you say, if Y, then not X. And it's already, the, all, the other differences are already accounted for by the initial question that I've asked you. So again, this is, this is there's no way out of this. This is just a contradiction. A contradiction. When I, if, why if, is it not if, a contradiction? If, 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 wait, one second, let me think about that. Okay, if Y, then X. If Y, then not X. Is that a contradiction or not? Yes. If P, then Q. If P, then not Q. Is that a contradiction? I believe so. I believe so, too. But, but, but as far as I'm concerned, what you're asking me is... Okay, no, as, as far as I'm concerned, what we're talking about is not two Ps. We're talking about a P and like a, and a different letter. We're, we're, it's not yeah, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it, oh. no, that's, that's not technically a contradiction. So if you, if you so make if you... that into a conjoined formula, like Y implies X and Y implies not X... That doesn't come up false on every row of the truth table. It's just it's just a technical nitpick, but I know some logic person will watch and make this comment. Because um, you're saying, wait, 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 you're, wait, you're saying wait, if this yeah. thing is the case, then X. If this thing is the case, then not X. But you're not saying that thing is the case. You're not actually getting to X and not X. It could just be that that thing's not the case. Like, if you look at here, I'll just post the truth table. Look. Yeah, 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 let's see. See how it's not, that's, that's a WFF formed from those two statements. See how it's not false in every row? Okay, so I could change it like this. I can say if, I could say the contradiction is this. Um, if, if Y then X, not if, and not if Y then X. That has to be a contradiction, surely. Oh, that's absolutely a contradiction. <laughs> okay, okay. And, but and, I can, but I can just, that's just yeah. some formula, alpha, and you're saying yeah. alpha and not alpha. That'll always be a contradiction. That'll always be a contradiction. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I could, I, this, this is the same thing I could do. This is the same, this is the same thing I can, I can say. Um, because he's saying, okay, if it's, if it's a hypothetical um, that were actual, then X. And then he's saying, if it was hypothetical that are actual, then not X. So that, 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 I, from that, I can say, I could say if hypothetical, then X, and not if hypothetical, then X. 
but I, I'm not I'm not saying if it's actual then this and if it's actual then this. I'm saying if it's actual then this and then if this other thing was actual then that. Yeah, but we're that's just tangential. We've already dialed in the circumstances that it's the same except for the differences being it possible versus actual. So that would just be weaseling. I don't know what you mean by we've dialed in on something. Yeah, know. we've already so so again. I I just I already stipulate that the only thing different is one's a hypothetical and one's a real world scenario. The only difference is one it goes from being possible to actual. That's the only difference. Let so me, it already accounts for me, any other. Yeah. Let me, let me help you, Avi, just by giving another example. Like it's really not complicated, dude. Imagine if someone says. If you were if you were actually driving a car, would you honk? And I say no. But if I actually were, but that's just because it's possible. If I were actually driving it, I would honk. It's like, well, the initial conversation, the initial question asked you. It it asked, would you, if this were actually the case, right? And you gave an answer, and then you said, but if this were actually the case, then, and then you say the opposite of that answer. Okay, you're you're saying you give an answer, yes, and then you specify a factor that's already assumed in the question, and then say no. Well, the thing you answered yes to had that assumption there, right? So you actually just effectively said yes and no to the same question, right? If you were actually in a car, would you honk? Yes, but that's just because I'm possibly in the car. If I were actually in the car, I wouldn't honk. Can you see the contradiction there? That actually was in the question. I see what you're saying, but but wouldn't my there's, there's no There's no but. Do you understand that that's a contradiction? I understand how it could be a thing, No, I didn't. It's no. not. No, it's not. It's not. A could. <laughs> Do you understand that what I just said is a contradiction? Not entirely. Okay. Do you understand that a contradiction is proposition and negation? Yes. Yeah. Do you understand that if I were in the car, I'd honk, and it's not the case that if I were in the car, I'd honk is a contradiction? I can't hear you. Do you understand that's a contradiction? That is proposition and negation, right? I asked, do you understand that proposition and negation is a contradiction? You say, yes, I give you proposition and negation. Do you understand that that example of a proposition and its negation is a contradiction? Okay, so- Don't ramble want... at me, no, don't, even, don't even try. Is the example I, I, a I contradiction? I, I, if I, I were in the car, I would honk, and it's not the case that if I were in the car, I'd honk. If you were in the is car, is that a contradiction? Honk. Yes or no? If I were in the car, I'd honk, and it's not the case that if I were in the car, I'd honk. Yeah, that's a contradiction. Okay, good. There you go. Yeah. So, do you understand that if I were, so if, but that's not what I'm saying. If these not, circumstances, that's, not that's that that's not analogous that, that, to what I'm saying. Analogous. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, that is, sorry, I, I swear I swear I'll give it back Avi that so that is what he's doing to you okay the question is just going if you were actually in the car would you honk you say yes but that's only possible if I were actually in the car I wouldn't honk right you're not seeing it because you're adding it what you think is a new factor before giving the contradictory answer but you don't realize the factor that you're giving before changing your answer was in the question you initially answered exactly that's that's yeah that's an l in the head okay so let me ask this is it is it wrong or is it contradictory for me to for for my stance to hinge on reality if if in the question it already accounted for that hindering yes if you give two different answers which is what my question already accounted well, I, for. i can't really hear you if the question I initially asked would already accounted for that hinging, then yes, it is so, wrong or contradictory. So can you explain to me how it accounted for that? Yeah, because when I say if if this ha occurred, I'm just asking if, if this hypothetical or if this possible thing were actual. It already accounts for it being a hypothetical. But if it were actual, then I, I would have a different stance on it. Well, then that's a contradiction. <laughs> because again, I just asked you, I just asked you, if it were actual, would you have this stance? And then you say, oh, well, I would have that stance, but if it were actual, then I would have a different stance. Well, that's clearly a contradiction. No, because it's currently actual, and that's why I have the stance. But if a different yes, scenario was but actual... Again, that's... 
Yes, but I'm person. asking in my question if it were actual. No, he ju he just weaseled to the just other. I, the this I point out both kinds. He just weaseled oh, okay. to the other kind of. The other wait, hold on. Let me see what you think. If wait, 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 wait. What do you say it again? Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me. Uh, wait. Say, can you say it again? Can you say the sophistry again? Let me see. I want to get this myself. Do you want me to say it, or, or you want him? To no, say no, 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 no. I want, I want, I want, I want him to say what he's actually saying. Wait. Sorry. What are you saying? You want me to repeat what I just said? I, I just want you to repeat the sophistry because I wasn't like fully. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so what I said was. Okay, what, what, what do you mean the so? I don't know what you're referring to. Like, so it's just like the what, whatever dishon like whatever dishonest thing you said. I'd like you to repeat it, so so I can um, so I could um, yeah, just just explain the issue. I want to be able to get this myself without Isaac's help. <laughs> so go ahead. Okay, so. My my stance here is uh, if some okay so my stance um, hinges on what's real, and if you tell me okay well what if this was real, it's like okay well if that was real I'd probably think differently but that's not real that's why I don't. Sure, that's fine. But if you say that if it were real, but but here's the problem. The problem is you didn't just say that. You said if it were real then I would give a different answer. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay, but that's, so that's, okay, so I would give an answer that's not that. So then you're saying, so, but the problem is when I give you the question in the first place, I'm asking you if it were real. So I say, if this is real, you give X. And then you can turn I, around and say. Can I just say these two things to you, Avi? So I thought of an mm -hmm. easy way to describe the two equivocations, okay? So there's one that's within view, and there's one that, that's between view. So the within view equivocation is where he equivocates between possible and actual, and then gives you a different answer based on that when you've specified it's actual, right? So that's, that's all within his view. But there's also a between view equivocation, where he says that would be a different being, and in that kind of being's mind, sure, it would be fine. But you're asking about his evaluation of that world, not about not some about projected right. being in projected. that world. That's I'm not cedaring. seeing how That's he's doing the second one. I'm not seeing how he's doing the cedaring, though. I think he seems to be cedaring sometimes, but admittedly, he's not clear a lot of the time. A lot of the time. Okay, so just like, just say what you're saying. Like, yeah. The whole, like, he's not, he's not asking you about your projected... He's not asking what would you in the hypothetical think. He's asking about what you think of the hypothetical. Oh, okay. So he's okay. Okay. So he's asking what my opinion of the hypothetical is. Yes. If it were real. Yes. If it were real, right? Yeah. So, so he's dealing with real. both yeah. equivocations. He's adding that we're talking about the instance where it is actual, and he said that he's talking about your current opinion of the instance where it's actual. So there's no equivocating to when it's possible and not actual, and there's no equivocating to what the being inside the hypothetical would think. He's asking what you currently think. Okay, so, okay. So, isn't there bias there? Because I'm currently a being in this reality, so I would be biased to, to have That's certain uh, propensities to different dodge. views. How is that a dodge? <laughs> dodge again. All right, I told you, listen, I told you if you dodge another time that I, I would be finished. But, like, I'm getting I, really I, to my I way. don't see how, I really don't see how I dodge, but... Like I'm, I'm literally I'm not trying literally to dodge. Trying look, to dodge. It, look, when when you just look, we're 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 giving X. Okay, so if X, then Y, and then it's if not X, then Y. Like that's clearly a contradiction. So you, we're accounting for the difference between it being real or not real because we're specifying if it were real, and then we're accounting for any equivocation between your view or that right is right now, or your view that if you had a view in the hypothetical, we're just specifying that it was your view right now. Okay, so you if, said if uh, that provides two uh, different answers, that would be a contradiction, right? Yes or no? Sorry, if if what provides two answers? If that provides if that provides x and not x, that would be a contradiction. X and not x is a contradiction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and if your view in this case, if it were, if it, if you say if this were real, and the question specifies that if it were real, and the question specifies that your view being your view evaluating the hypothetical, not within the hypothetical, if that provides x and not x, that would be a contradiction, right? Uh, so if I evaluate the the hypothetical, 
and I say something contradictory to what I would say prior when I say, oh, well, I'm not in that reality. That if reality. your evaluation provides X and not X. If, okay. So my evaluation, okay. So let, let, let's make this into like a, uh, into context. So um, give me a hypothetical and I'll tell you oh, why. I'll, uh, I'll, I, I'll, I, I will. Know. And you answer that. I will once you answer the question. So if your evaluation being you being, without the hypothetical, not within the hypothetical, evaluating the hypothetical. And by hypothetical, we just mean if this thing, if this possible thing were real, if your view generates X and not X, that's a contradiction. You agree or disagree? Um, I would disagree. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it, it would not be a contradiction on your view. That uh, it, would, it would not X necessarily. And not, X and not X. It would not necessarily how, be one. How is it? How it would it not necessarily be a contradiction? So tell me how X and not X is already again already dialing in that it's your your same view to being evaluating the hypothetical, and it's already the same by hypothetical. We just mean if it, this possible thing were real, X and not X. Explain to me how X and not X is now not a contradiction. Okay, so if, okay, because the problem here is is uh, if you ask me of my evaluation of the hypothetical. You're asking someone who's not in the hypothetical, so they can't give a clear-cut answer on that. They have a bias. Okay, so you can clearly give an evaluation of the hypothetical if your mind is not in the hypothetical. And regardless, even if you couldn't, X and not X would still be a contradiction. If you ask someone in the hypothetical... No, I'm not. We already, we already were clear that we weren't doing that. So that, don't weasel there. We were clear that we were asking you your evaluation of the hypothetical situation, how you are as of now, your evaluation of the situation being without the hypothetical, your evaluation of the hypothetical. We're not saying your mind is in the hypothetical and it has some different view. No, I'm just saying your mind being evaluating the hypothetical itself. X and not X. Is it a contradiction? Okay. X and not X. Yes, that's a contradiction. Okay, good. Now you're, your mind evaluating the hypothetical, and by hypothetical, we just mean if this possible thing were real, generates X and not X as an answer to a hypothetical question. Is it a contradiction? If my evaluation generates X and not X, is that what you're saying? Yeah, if your evaluation of the hypothetical generates X and not X. If, okay. I would say there's circumstances where you could say it's not a contradiction. What circumstances would we say that's not a contradiction? Well, as I said, <laughs> depending on who you ask, it'll, it'll be different like biases. Like, biases. It's a different we already perception. accounted for that. No, we already accounted so, for sir, that in the question. Is this guy creating a new logic? Because that's just what a contradiction is defined as in logic. You moron. A contradiction is proposition and negation. Are you inventing your own logic, or do you submit to the actual logics that have been developed so far by people who aren't complete idiots? Uh, okay, so I just heard a bunch of ad hominems there, but okay. Um, no, what were no, you no, saying? No, I'm, asking, I'm asking you a question. Can you answer it? Are you creating your own logic, or do you submit to the logics that we actually have currently? I'm not creating my own logic. Okay, so it's a contradiction, right? It's not, it's not sometimes a contradiction. A contradiction is defined as proposition and negation. It's not that a ma an unmarried man is sometimes a bachelor, right? That's what it means to be a bachelor. It's what it means to be a contradiction, proposition and negation. It's not sometimes a contradiction. Okay, so, so, so there are never any circumstances where, where P and not P is not a contradiction. No, that's what I, this, this is such fundamental stupidity. It's insane. That is the definition of a contradiction. There's no, there's no instance where P and not P isn't a contradiction. Do you think there's an instance where an unmarried man isn't a bachelor? Well, well, no, that, that's a particular context, so I would say no. Yeah, it's <laughs> no. <laughs> there's many contexts with unmarried men, you moron. Now, look, that's just, the point is just that unmarried man is the definition of bachelor. Proposition and negation is the definition of contradiction. There is no context where an unmarried man 
isn't a bachelor, and there is no context where proposition and negation isn't a contradiction. That's the definition of a bachelor. That's the definition of a contradiction. Okay, sure. Okay. So again, X and not X, your evaluation of the hypothetical, hypothetical being if it were real, if, if it were, if this possible thing were actual, X and not X, is that a contradiction? Okay, so I'll, I'll just, yeah, that, that's, that's a, that would be a contradiction. Okay, good, great. So you cannot say that, oh, my evaluation of whether something is healthy or not, if I already ask you if this were, if this possible thing were actual, you give me one answer for it being healthy, and then you say, oh, but that's only because it's possible and not actual, and if it were actual, I have another answer for being healthy. That would actually be a contradiction. I'm not saying only because it's possible. I'm saying only because it's literally not reality. Okay, but that wasn't the question. The question is, if it were reality, would you, give it, would you consider it to be healthy? And you say one thing, and then you say, oh, well, if it were real, it's only because it's not reality, but if it were reality, I wouldn't give that answer because it's not, not re currently reality. That was already accounted for in the question. So that's why that would be a contradiction. Okay, so I, I heard that there were two um, equivocations. The one where I said, yeah, yeah the, the one that I was saying, um, and then the second one would be me evaluating the hypothetical, correct? Yeah, so the other, the other weasel pathway could be that you equivocate between your mind being within the hypothetical. Um, and then without, and that is supposed to being evaluating the hypothetical external. So you can say, oh, it's not a contradiction because the me that you were talking about is in the hypothetical evaluating it themselves. And that could be a different mind than the mind that I currently have now. So we have already dialed in those things that we can make sure that none of those options are available. We're dialing in that it's your mind evaluating the hypothetical now. And we're dialing in that this possible thing or act is actual. And so there's no way you can use either of those um, dishonest pathways. Okay. My, my brain is like burnt out right now. I, I just did like seven debates in a row. Um, I, I'd be more than happy to definitely continue talking about this exact uh, topic like some other time. Um. So yeah, I'm definitely down to continue this, but like right now my brain is just like fully burnt out. If you want to like wrap it up, we can like go ahead. And okay. Up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think that in I mean, it's clear that you've had, uh, you have an epistemic standard. It's led you to hilarious conclusions, conclusions everyone would, would look at and laugh at hysterically. And the reason for that is not, is because there's something um, lacking in your epistemic standard. Um, and so I would encourage you to go back to the drawing board and, Evaluate your epistemic standard for evidence and account for other factors that it clearly is missing. Account for things like evidence, things like the evidence hierarchy, things like science. And you wouldn't have to be pretzeled into these hilarious views about, um, you know, eating fecal matter stew or you smoking or you're drinking your own piss or all of these things that everyone recognizes as hilarious. And, uh, you also wouldn't have to get into this whole thing where you're contradicting yourself in the first place. So, yeah, I would just leave it at that. You can have the last word. Yeah, well, um, uh, to all of that, I, I would say, uh, you know, this, uh, this was my, my first debate, and um, I'm definitely going to reevaluate everything that we talked about. And I'm going to, uh, as you said, go back to the drawing board, and I'm just going to reevaluate everything, uh, see what I missed, if I missed anything. And uh, I'll come to a conclusion on um, on how this went and, and what I said, and we'll go from there. Maybe we can talk about it some other time.